Hello everybody, welcome to computerhandle.com. So, up till the previous lecture, we have done everything what we could do, which we had done in flowcharts. So all we had learned to, is to translate them into pseudocode. And this chapter was intended for that. However, there's just one quick extra concept which we need to cover before we can actually go on to the end of chapter uh, revision factors. And that is the highest lowest. So what we essentially mean by highest lowest is that we need to denote uh, on exactly how can we denote a number is a, either highest or lowest number and the technique in pseudocode we use. So let's get on with it. All right, I'm going to take my new red marker and I'm going to now, um, let's suppose we're going to do highest now. Okay. Now let's uh, assume that we'll assign the value of highest uh, any variable x to 0, right? I'm designing a rough pseudocode here. Let's suppose x is 0. Now, we need to come input, let's suppose we need to input the value of m, okay? Let's suppose the next number we input is m. Input m, okay? And then we need to compare uh, m and x. So if m is greater than x, it will replace the value of m. So if m greater than x, Okay, not greater than equal to, only greater than. So we'll suppose we are supposing that x so far zero is the highest value. But if m is greater than x, then it's obvious that m will be the highest value relative to x, which means that we're going to swap down the values, and we're going to say that the value of m will be assigned to value of x, which let's suppose denotes the uh, highest number of uh, the highest number in the entire pseudocode or you can send it through the entire loop all right and uh, then we'll have an end if here okay and that's how we can denote that a number is highest or not so let's suppose that our x was zero okay let's suppose we input the number m let any b let's suppose minus one so the highest value will remain zero because m is uh, greater than x, that condition will be false, so it won't proceed on to through the f part, uh, the, through the uh, if part. However, if the value of x is one or greater, let's suppose it to be two, then the value of m, which is two, is greater than the value of x condition, which is zero. Condition is declared true, and therefore the value of m, which is two, will be assigned to the value of x, which is, which will, which is zero, but now will be two. So um, th that's how we keep, tra keep trace on exactly. Uh, uh, on, that's how we keep trace of exactly the value of x, which we are supposing in this pseudocode is the highest value. Now we're just comparing two values. We need to compare up to 10, 20, 30 values. So for that, we can just have a loop for i 1 to 10. All right, and we can have a next here now the value of m will be inputted 10 times however yeah there's a mistake we can't sign this this should be above the false statement there we go so now what's exactly essentially happening here is that the value of m is being inputted and if it's greater than x which is the highest value it's going to assign the value of m to x all right so let's create a quick trace table here so we've got x m and we've got an output well i've I'm not writing output for now. Okay, so yeah, here we go. So let's suppose the value of x is initially zero. Now let's suppose the input minus one, the highest value of x for it's one to 10, okay? The highest value of x is uh, zero, the, the condition is false, it will remain zero. Let's suppose the input minus 10, the condition will still remain zero. However, if I input two, the highest value will be two. However, if I input one again, this time it's higher than the zero. But the new value of x is now 2, but 1 is greater than 2, condition is false. This will remain 2. But if I enter, let's suppose, 20, then this will become 20. All right. All right. And if I, let's say, input a number smaller than 20, let's suppose it to be 15, it will remain 20. And that's how we keep trace of the highest number. And at the end of the loop, the value of the final value of x will be declared our highest number. Okay. So that's essentially the basic concept of highest and lowest. All right, so we assign an initial value to, uh, to a variable, let's suppose it to be x. All right, we input m multiple times through a loop. And then uh, for in, in, in this instance, it's a for loop. And the highest value of x is till, let's suppose, 
35. So it'll output 35 if we write print 35. Uh, sorry, print the value of x, so it's going to print 35. Supposing the defining value of x is 35, and which is indeed the highest value of all numbers entered. But we have a problem here. The problem is that if we were to enter a negative number, you know, if we were to enter, let's suppose, a negative number only, and let's suppose I enter minus 2, minus 6, minus 3, 20, minus 4, minus 1, minus 3, the highest number will be minus 1. That's obvious. However, if it's going to compare minus 1 to 0, it's going to say, hey, buddy, 0 is greater, so it will output 0, but I haven't inputted 0. So what we do to solve this mess is we don't assign the value of x initially to 0. Instead, we assign it to a very minor minute number a very very small number down in the negative you understand me a very very small number down in the negative so a person would definitely would not have to enter minus one million or something he never will all right so uh we'll assume that the value of x is let's suppose minus ten thousand all right here we go and so Assuming that the person would not enter any number below minus 9999, the pseudocode is true and it will output the highest value, be it negative or positive for now. Okay? Same case for lowest. However, things will be swapped, which means that for lowest, this time the comparison, let's suppose we copied the exact same pseudocode here, the only difference will be in the if statement where m will be smaller to x because now we're comparing in terms of the smaller sign we need to now and let's suppose uh find out the lowest value of data set center so that's one change and the other change that we will not sign the value of x to minus 1000 so already to minus 10000 however in the case of lowest what we need to do is we need to have a highest possible number which user will not enter let's suppose it to be positive 10000 all right and if we create let's suppose an x and m uh, trace table for it. Let's suppose I enter the value of x. Let's suppose x is initially 10,000. All right, this is for lowest. Let's suppose I enter uh, 12,000. It's going to compare. M Is m smaller than x? No. The smallest value will remain x, 10,000. However, if I enter, let's suppose 10. Or well, let's make it 1,000, okay? Then the value of x, this condition will become true. And then it will assign the value of m to x, which will be 1,000. All right, and let's suppose if I enter minus 10, this will become minus 10. But if I enter 10 again, 10 was greater than, smaller than the initial value, but it's not the smallest of the data sets we've entered yet, which means that this x will remain minus 10. And that's how the final value of x in this case will be the lowest number. Now with that understood, oh, I'm not right, I accidentally was about to uh, write understood, <laughs> lowest number, okay? So, this is x, all right, in case of lowest number. This is in case of highest number. The only two differences between these two codes, the, the highest will assign the initial value to minor possible value, but then the lowest will assign it to a highest possible value the user is possible to enter, all right? And of course, this is not restricted to 10,000. This can also be a million or billion or whatever you say, all right, but it should be any number user is very unlikely to enter, okay? And then... The only difference in the comparison will be the sign switch. It will be it was now uh, greater than, but now it will be smaller than. Of course, because now we are tracing out the lowest values in the pseudocode instead of the highest values. Now, with that said, I want you to pause the video, think about it for a minute. If you don't understand, we can recap the video instead because it's a quite important concept, okay, and quite important technique. So I hope you understand it. If not, you are free to watch, uh, free to you know, um, go back in the video and. Uh, understand the whole process okay with that understood let's now proceed on towards the question all right so here's the question it says to input 20 numbers and then output the largest even number now take note this time it's yes it's largest we're gonna uh, proceed on with the same facts we did here the same technique however this time it also says an even number which means we're going to have an if statement separate for the la largest and an if statement separate for the even so let's get started by designing the program. And let me now tell you that by now, considering the practice we have, 
you should be able to directly create a pseudocode out of question without having to draw the flowchart. All right, at the beginning of this chapter, we had to draw the flowchart because we were not used to the pseudocode. However, now we are. So we have to now try, you know, and get grasp of the concepts and to have enough practice that you can directly draft on pseudocode um, without having to create a flowchart for a question. So let's get started with such question. So let's pull, let's uh, recap the variables we will be needing. So we will be needing uh, the value of let's suppose um, input. Uh, num let's suppose num one. All right. Actually, let's name it num i, which means num input. Okay. And so num i will be integer. All right. And its purpose will be to an input variable. Okay. And then uh, the even number, uh, we don't need a separate uh, variable for the even number. However, we need a separate uh, number for the high. So what we're going to do is num h will be declared as integer input. All right. And again, why I'm using integer, not double? Well, the reason is that I always, as always, forget to mention 20 integer numbers for the sake of simplification. Okay. Oh, yeah. Now it's visible on the screen. So let's get on started with pseudocode. So we'll have to declare the two variables first. Both are integers. We can both declare them on one line. So we'll write declare num h. Hope let's hope we don't run out of space. Num i as integer. That was close. All right, I'll draw a line here like so. So declare num i num h as integer. I'm going to leave one line in case we need another another variable. Then we're going to start from line three. So we will start on by assigning the smallest possible value to num h. All right, and let's suppose it to be negative ten thousand, which we did right here. Well, that's negative one million, ten million. But uh, let's simplify the process by just saying a negative ten thousand. So we'll assign the value of num h to negative 10,000, okay? And num h will be the highest number is right now negative 10,000 without any numbers being inputted, okay? So um, once this is done, we're gonna start our loop for i one to 20. i is a variable and uh, which actually keeps trace and we don't need a declaration for i if we repeat. So uh, we have for i 1 to 20, and then we will start off by uh, stating that uh, if the if statement for the largest number, okay? So what we will going to do, but this time we'll have two conditions. We need to output the largest even number, all right? Which means that in the if statement, we're going to have a single if statement. If uh, num h, oh, sorry, uh, we have to input num i, of course. So input num i then we're going to have the if statement if num i is greater than the highest value right uh, which will be num h then we used to say that oh man assign the value of high uh, of the value of num h to the highest value in this case would be m and x okay it's not m and m not the candies m and m it's m and x okay so, but this time we have two conditions, even. So let's, isn't it better to just keep trace of only the even largest numbers and to output the largest even number, which means we can have two conditions in a single F statement. You know, we can link both of these together, which essentially means that we can have this condition and another condition. So if both of the conditions are true, it's going to output that number. All right, it's going to swap that number. So if num i is num h and if num i modulus 2 returns 0, which means that if divided by 2, when the remainder is 0, you know, that's how we remember, that's how we used to keep trace of the even numbers. So if 6 divided by 2 is equal to 0, that was our mod. However, 7 divided by 2 is equal to 1, that's our mod. So this is even, this is odd. We need to keep trace of the even numbers only, which means that it should be divided by modulus 2 equal to 0, something which you did exactly right here. So we have these two conditions. Once we've done, we can uh, simply, you know, assign the value of num i to num h. So we can say num uh, h is num i, which means that the new value, let's suppose the highest value 
through the current loop f yeah, will be signed to the highest value of num h. Okay, so we're going to write an end if here, and then we will um, click on next, and then we will output. We can say print the simple value of h, print num h, which will be the highest value of data sets we've entered. Now, let's drive in the program by num i, num h, and then output. Okay, let's create a quick, well, not do it 20 times. I'm just giving it sample, okay? And let's just draw the start as well. And something more like this okay so all right so num h and num i are now declared as integer we know that these values are integer num h is assigned the value of minus one ten thousand we'll write that here for i is one to twenty all right so oh we'll also keep trace of i the number of loop all right so i is one to twenty let's start from the next line it's one so input num i let's suppose i input 10 of course 10 is higher than that um, so it will check the condition. Yes, num i is higher than 10, but it will also check the condition that if it's even and or not. 10 divided by 2 is 5. It does not have any remainder, which means it returns 0, which means both of the conditions are true at the same time. Yeah, the num h will be the new, the num i will be the new num h. Okay, so both, uh, if we recap, both of the conditions have to be true in order to run this statement. Otherwise, even if one of them is false, this statement would not run. To change that, we would have written either or here. Okay, we would have instead of and, we, if we wrote or, which means uh, of the both conditions, if either one was correct, it would have uh, run the statement, but that's really not a matter. We need an and because we need to uh, output the largest and even number. So we're going to cross that out. So let's suppose the, the loop runs for the second time now. All right, I input num i again. This time, let it be uh, 12. Then, of course, it's going to compare 12. And yeah, 12 is an even number. Num h will be sent a new value of 12. Now, for the third time, let's suppose I enter 17. 17 is greater than 12. This condition is true. But this is not, which means that num i modulus 2 is equal to 1. This condition is false, which means it won't run the if statement. And essentially, if it won't run the if statement, it means that num h will remain 12. No doubt that 17 is higher than 12. And so far of the numbers we've entered yet, 17 is the highest number. But the question asked us the largest even number, which is 12. And that's how we keep trace of things like this. So let's suppose we come down to 20. Let's suppose num i we enter is um, 12. And let's suppose the highest number is 122. All right, and after running 122, it's going to output 122. All right, keep remember the highest value input in num i could also be higher than 122, but must be an odd number. And that's how this question is now declared complete. So I want you to do one thing this time. I want you to just read the question again, you know, uh, write it on a piece of paper, finish this video, finish this lecture, and try to solve it on your own. You know, to really make sure that you get a hand of practice. So that's it with this lecture. And uh, I'm happy to say that we've completed with chapter two. And uh, so now from the next lecture onwards, we will start on with the end of practice question. So we've got, uh, as of right now, we have six of them, two easy, two medium, two hard. All right, so um, let's get started on with them in the next lectures. Now, before we get started on, if you have any doubt, on any lecture or any of the concept, please review that first. Uh, hey, come here, you. Review that first uh, before you actually jump on to the final questions. All right, so that's it for this lecture. Thank you, everybody. This is uh, founder of uh, computerhandle.com signing off. Take care. Bye-bye.